In this video, you will understand why the beacon chain is the heart of the Ethereum 2.0 Serenity upgrade. I'll also dive into some very interesting topics such as what is sharding, what are attestations, finality FFG, uh, checkpoints, committees, and much, much more. My name's Kieran, really happy to have you here today. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm Kieran, I make crypto and decentralized finance videos to make sure that you are ready for the next bull run. So make sure you hit that red subscribe button, join me on the journey and let's dive into this very interesting piece of topic and that is the beacon chain. You might have heard of it and yeah, it's, it's very interesting. It's the heart of a massive, massive system. The first part of the update, the phase zero beacon chain. And before we start with the beacon chain, let's explain the main problem that is plaguing Ethereum. And not only Ethereum, many other blockchains have the same issue and that is scalability. And yeah, the, the main problem in scalability that blockchains, including Ethereum have, is that every node has to verify and execute every transaction. And when you've got many, many transactions, well, that's going to be a problem if uh, the system cannot handle several thousands or millions of transactions. Well, then at some point the system uh, stops working. And we've seen that happen on multiple occasions. There was one case with many transactions uh, causing problems with the MakerDAO um, DAP. And there was also many problems uh, during the 2017 bull run with the crypto kitties that were uh, causing many transactions and bloating the network. So in uh, computer science, there are two different options for that, um, solving this problem. And that would be scaling. And you can either scale uh, vertically, that makes make the nodes much more powerful, or you can scale horizontally. And it's just adding many, many, many nodes. And you don't have to be that powerful if you can uh, compensate for a large amount of nodes. And that is exactly what Ethereum 2.0 is aiming to do. And with the Serenity upgrades, they will allow many people to um, become the validator on the system with their personal hardware. It's probably even possible with a Raspberry Pi, as you can see, you don't really need the strongest hardware uh, around. And that is fantastic because that will allow many people to um, stake, to become a validator, and it will allow the whole network, the whole blockchain to scale in a horizontal way. Now, there are some challenges with uh, sharding. So first of all, a shard chain is a subset of nodes processing it and virtual miners validators are assigned to shards and only process and validate transactions in that shard chain. And in uh, the Ethereum 2.0, they're gonna be 64 shards and they're all gonna be communicating with the beacon chain. And you're gonna have, uh, yeah, these uh, miners, these um, nodes processing this shard chain. There is one challenge with uh, charging, sharding on the blockchain and that is mainly the security. And this is going to be handled by random shuffling of the validators where every block um, shard block has a pseudo randomly chosen committee of validators making sure that uh, the security is a lot higher and reducing uh, possible attack vectors. So the current plan for the EVE 2 is 64 shards. All those shards are separate from the beacon chain. They will be described later on in the video. Now for the different phases, I've covered different phases already before, but I found a very, very smart analogy for the phases that make you maybe understand the importance of the different phases, phases a lot better. So we've got the phase zero, which is the beacon chain which should hopefully happen this summer. Then the phase one is the shards and the phase two is the execution. So the first analogy is that I found was with the human body. And basically the phase zero, phase zero upgrade would be the heart uh, pumping blood through the whole body, um, making sure that oxygen is in all the limbs. And phase one is the limbs of the human body and phase two is the brain of the operation, making sure that all the transactions work. 
And there's another analogy, which uh, if you're more uh, musically inclined, you prefer this one. And that would be the phase zero as the conductor of an orchestra. The phase one is instruments, which on their own don't do that much. But with the phase two, the musicians come into play and they make sure that everything works. So this is a very, very good analogy. Happy about this and hopefully it makes it a little bit clearer for you. Now, the, the, the bacon, the beacon, not bacon, the beacon chain, uh, provides the heartbeat and you've got slots and epochs. This is very, very important. So each slot is 12 seconds and an epoch is 32 slots. Now you notice that we're talking about slots and not blocks. I mean, a block is also 12 seconds, but we're taking, we, we, we in um, Ethereum 2.0, we use uh, slots because it's possible that one of these slots does not have a block. It could also be possible that there are no blocks in a whole epoch, though that shouldn't really happen. So the whole epoch lasts around six minutes and 24 seconds. And yeah, so each slot, so you can have, uh, can have one block and in an epoch, you can have uh, 32 blocks. As you can see, we start with a zero. And um, so a slot is a chance for a block to be added to the bacon chain and shards. So yeah, a slot is like a, like the block time, but slots can be empty. Now, validators, attestations, and the beacon chain. Attestations is another word for votes. And a block proposer is a validator that has been pseudo randomly selected to make the whole thing a lot more safe to build a block. So here we've got a, a graphic that will hopefully explain it. And a random validator proposes a block for each slot and the validator receives a reward if other validators vote for this pl um, proposed block. And as we mentioned before, slots may be missing a block and this happens when the assigned validator does not propose a new block for that slot, then this slot gets skipped and the next slot gets filled up with a block. And yes, if a validator misses out on uh, submitting a block, then you will not get the reward um, that you otherwise would get. And an attestation is a validator's vote. And this is also weighted by the validator's balance. Um, so these attestations, these votes are broadcasted by validators in addition to other blocks. And one important aspect of the validators is that they also make sure that other uh, validators are um, playing fair, not doing anything maliciously, and they will report other validators that make conflicting votes or propose multiple votes. I'll talk about penalties later on. I didn't make a video about it. You can check it up here, but I'll talk about penalties again. And staking validators, each validator has a maximum balance of 32 Ethereum, but stakers can stake all of their ETH, but for every 32 ETH that they stake, one validator is activated. That's important to understand. And uh, furthermore, a validator client can implement a beacon node functionality or make calls into beacon nodes and one validator can um, execute one or more validators. So cross links routing shards to the beacon chain is very important because of how the beacon chain works and how the shard chains work. And this cross link is how the beacon chain can follow the head of the shard chain as there are 64 shards and each beacon block can contain up to um, 64 cross links. A committee, and these are very important. So a committee is a group of validators and it depends on how many validators are available. Um, the amount of uh, validators in the committee can change. So for, for security reasons, each slot in the beacon chain and each SART has a committee of 128 validators. So that means that an attacker would have less than one trillion probability to uh, control two thirds of committee, increasing the security a lot more. 
So one very, very um, important aspect of the beacon chain is uh, pseudo random process called Randau. And uh, it sounds like it's very similar to random. And what it does, it makes sure that proposers and the different validators in the committee are selected in a random manner. So you've got a pool of many, many different active validators in this blue box. And Randau makes sure that proposer, for example, this proposer is selected randomly and the committee. However, what is possible is that a proposer can also be part of a committee and this would be for slot one. And for slot 31, you've got another committee, 128 valid validators uh, who vote, like the proposer adds one block for slot 31 and this, uh, this committee then votes and says that this block is all right and can be added to this slot. And yes, so you have to, what you have to know, this is important and it's at every epoch so after 6.4 minutes, a pseudo random process Randau selects proposers for each slot and shuffles validators to committees. And this helps make the whole thing a lot more random, a lot more secure. We're going to skip this part. Now committees and an important uh, point for committees at every epoch, validators are evenly divided across slots and then subdivided into committees of appropriate size. And all of the validators from that slot attest to the beacon chain head. Each of the committees in that slot attempts to cross-link a particular shard and a shuffling algorithm scales up or down the number of committees per slot to get at least 128 validators per committee, but it can be a lot less if there are a lot less validators in the system. Now, checkpoints are also very important and how they work, it can, it can change depending on if there are blocks in, um, if, the, if there are blocks in all the slots of an epoch. However, if the slots are empty, it's possible that a checkpoint can validate uh, multiple epochs. So a, a checkpoint is a block in the first slot of an epoch. Um, however, if there's no such block, then the checkpoint is the next uh, preceding most recent block. And there's always one checkpoint for an epoch, but the next um, epoch could have the checkpoint for the previous epoch. It sounds quite complicated, but to be honest, it's uh, as soon as you've got the different um, uh, terminology, it actually gets a lot easier. Now there's another important term and that is a supermajority. Basically what that just means is that uh, votes have been made by two thirds of the total balance of all activated validators. And this is very important. This uh, voting is very important for the finality. Finality is um, to make sure that basically it's, it's to make sure that an epoch ends and as soon as a checkpoint has garnered two thirds of the votes, well, the previous epoch gets uh, finalized. Here's another uh, graphic that hopefully can explain it a little bit better in detail. So the Genesis epoch, by definition, the Genesis block is finalized automatically. And then in um, at the beginning, here we've got um, block 32, uh, checkpoint and here if 64 so the one afterwards is justified um, many attestations have happened well then um, slot 32 and all preceding blocks so all these ones here get finalized and at um, slot 64 block 64 checkpoint uh, the beacon chain checks whether the first block from epoch 2 has garnered attestations votes from two thirds of the validator so if it's more than 66 percent then if so the block at slot 64 and the preceding blocks in epoch 1 are justified and the epoch is finalized and attestations, a uh, quick look at um, the different um, aspects of that. We've got LMD ghost and FFG votes. 
And FFG votes is the um, proof of stake algorithm. It also includes the slashing the penalties for bad validators. Now, in, in a good scenario, um, all validators submit one attestation per epoch and an attestation has 32 uh, slots chances for including, uh, inclusion on chain. Now for the beacon chain validator rewards and penalties. I made a video about that um, where I go more into detail about all the formulas for rewards. I'll link it here and you can check those out. But here are the most important rewards and penalties that you encounter. So the number one is attester, so voting rewards. And then you've also got voting penalties, which can also happen. Then you've got typical downside risks for t um, stakers, slashings, and whistleblower rewards. However, I want to point out for the whistleblower rewards that uh, during phase zero, the whistleblower will not get any um, slashing rewards only in later stages. Then uh, five is proposal rewards and six is inactivity penalty. I've had a lot of uh, people talking and asking about the inactivity penalty. So I'm sure that this part will interest you a lot because I'll, I'll show also how much you can actually lose by becoming inactive. And this is very, very important, especially if you want to become a validator. So here, the validators are rewarded when they make attestations, LMD ghost and uh, FFG votes, which is important for the finalization, the checkpoints and all that. And in EVE 2 phase one validators will also receive rewards for cross links. So you have to understand if you want to become a validator, you have to understand the downside risk in becoming a validator. So you've got two different things. You've got the penalties and you've got the slashings and the slashings are the worst part. So as a staker concerned about how may, how much ETH you may lose, so it's, it's basically the same amount of ETH that you can gain by staking. So if you can, um, gain around 10% of ETH per year, well, that's how much, um, ETH you can lose per year if you're, for example, inactive or you do the worst job possible as a, a validator. And slashings, well, slashings are really bad. Our penalties, and it can range from 0 0.5 to, um, well, basically you're the, the entire stake that you are got. But you have to understand that slashing is a very bad offense and it can happen for three different reasons. So the slashable offenses are um, a double proposal, and this is a proposer proposing more than one block for the assigned slot. The second one is a double vote, and that's when um, a validator casts two FFG votes. So you should only have one FFG vote per epoch. And number three is a surround vote. And it's, a surround vote is basically an FFG vote in epoch six with a source slot of 64 and a target slot of 96. And um, this would be an FFG vote that was surrounded by the Epoch 5 vote. It's a little bit more complicated and it shouldn't really happen, but um, it's good to know that this is also a possibility of how a slashable offense can happen. Now let's, last but not least, let's look at the beacon chain validator activation on life cycle. There's a very interesting uh, UML uh, diagram that I want to share with you. So first of all, um, I had also many different questions about what you have to do when you want to exit the, if you want to stop, you want to stop validating, for example, well, during the phase zero, that's probably not going to be possible. So your, um, Eve two is going to be locked up. There might be some scenarios where you can uh, remove it, but there's nothing that concrete at the moment, but afterwards, well, uh, beacon chain exits all validators whose balance reaches 16 ETH. So that's another way. If you get slashed and you've got less than 16 ETH, then uh, you can also uh, be removed. So you can either choose to remove uh, to uh, exit the beacon chain, or you can be forcefully removed. Sounds very violent. So here's a diagram um, with the whole step by step with different um, checks 
what can happen. So you start with um, the depositing amount. So you put your 32 Ethereum and here checks, all right, is he eligible for activation queue? Um, if yes, it continues. If no, well, check again at the next epoch. So in around 6.4 minutes. So yes, and then after first epoch and step number two, he in the uh, activation queue. So it depends how many people at the same time want to become validators. So then um, this duration can change. Then this is another check, check if eligible and acti activation and FIFO, which means first in first out. If no, then check again at the next epoch, pretty straightforward. So if the answer is yes, well, basically continue down the line and after four epochs um, where well, this validator is activated and you don't really have to do that much more. However, there are different scenarios that can happen. Well, on maybe a bad day, uh, you might get slashed and that initiates exit and after four epochs after 25.6 minutes and first in first out. So if there's another um, validator that is getting slashed and is before you, he will proceed before you. So you're slashed and exited. And here's a really bad aspect for the, uh, if you get slashed and you will be allowed to exit in the future. And that is 36 days in the future or exit um, epochs plus two to the power of 13. So 36 days in the future is pretty bad. And it's hopefully a deterrent for people trying to uh, manipulate or um, do some bad actions to the system. And then after 36 days, you're withdrawable. Now, Another option is if you've got insufficient balance, uh, you go under 16 ETH, well then you're also force exited after four epochs, 25.6 uh, minutes and first in, first out. If you're unslashed um, and exited, well it goes to the slash and exited uh, channel. However, if it's unslashed and it continues and after around 27 hours, um, you can withdraw your ETH. Now the other option, which is uh, hopefully the best is if you want to withdraw without, you just, you just want to stop being a validator and withdraw your ETH. Well, be basically after two to the power of 11 epochs, around nine days, a voluntary exit is initiated. And then it goes down the steps that we saw before. So if you're unslashed then you can just continue and then after 27 hours, you're withdrawable. And all these steps, it's, all um, tied to how many people are trying to come into the system, how many validators are uh, in line uh, to enter or to exit the system to make sure that not too many people enter. But the biggest problem is to make sure that not too many people exit the system. So yeah, that that's it. So this was my uh, hopefully comprehensive guide on what the beacon chain is, what the shards are, understanding um, the slots, the epochs, the blocks, and all different terminologies associated with that. I'll link this article down below. A big thanks um, to the EFOS dev team for providing such an in-depth and interesting article. Make sure you check it out, check them out. Um, they've got other articles that are very uh, well uh, detailed, well explained, talking about different uh, topics, especially Ethereum um, 2.0 upgrade. So that was it. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. I'll gladly answer them. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. Stay safe and have a good one. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.